the Bible says, blessed is that man whose sins are forgiven. Blessed is that man who walks with God. I walk with God. I'm a friend of God. Are you on your way to heaven or are you on your way to hell? Are you a friend of God or are you an enemy of God? I was once an enemy of God by my wicked works. The sins that I have done. That God sent forth his law, right? The Ten Commandments. Have you ever lied, stolen, looked with lust, fornicated, drunkenness, haven't worshipped God? And so we come out here to preach the goodness and the severity of God. The goodness of God, the severity of God. The severity of God is that it's appointed unto man to die once and then face the judgment. And that God is a just judge. He's a just judge over all of the earth. His throne, in his, his throne is in heaven. And he looks down from his throne and he watches the sons of men. He watches women and children. The things that you do in secret, God sees. And on the day of judgment, on the day that you die, some of us are very close. Today could be your last day. Today could be the day that your soul is required. And then you stand before God. You live, you die, and you stand before God and give an account of your life. And God is just, and God has a standard. It's not what you think is right. It's not what you, think, what you feel is right. It's what God says is right. And God says all liars will have their part in the lake of fire. All fornicators will have their part in the lake of fire. All drunkards will have their part in the lake of fire. Now, listen, I've been to this, this festival the last four years. There's a lot of drunkards that go into this festival. A lot of people that like to drink. But God says all drunkards will have their part in the lake of fire. And so we come out here because the Bible tells us to love your neighbor. And I see my neighbors, they're just going into hell. They're just falling off. They're, they're choosing to go their own way. That's what the Bible says, that we choose to go our own way. And our sin separates us from God. One sin separates us from God. God is holy. God is holy, righteous, and just. What does it mean that he's holy? He's separate. He's nothing like us. He is nothing like us. We are just dust, and he created us. He is the creator. He is the potter, and we're just the clay. And he formed us and breathed in the breath of life. And he, he created man to be upright, but we've all gone our separate ways. Right? We're all like sheep. We've gone our separate ways without a shepherd. And then on the day of judgment, we're going to stand before him. The holy God, the righteous God, that everything he does is holy, righteous, and just. And we're going to stand before him on, on the day of judgment. The Bible says the day of the Lord is cruel with both fierce wrath and anger. My concern is that most people, most people go to church, but they don't know the truth. They believe, but they're not saved. Jesus said in John 3, 3, a man must be born again. You must be born again to enter into the kingdom of God. Are you religious or are you born again? Are you a born again Christian? Repentance. Have you repented and believed in the gospel? Repentance is a change of mind, a change of attitude, where the things that you once loved, you now hate, and the things you once hated, you now love. You now become a friend of God through repentance and faith. Faith in Jesus Christ. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Jesus Christ came to save sinners. He didn't come to save the righteous. There are no righteous people. So if you think you're good and you think you're righteous, he didn't come to save you. He came to save those who are sinners. Are you a sinner? He says all have sinned. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's why he came to save you. He came to save you from your sins. He shed his blood for you. He rose again from the dead. We've come here today to talk to you to tell you we have a holy God, Jesus Christ the Lord, who came to save sinners. And we are all sinners. He calls us all sinners. And you need to repent of your sin and turn from your sin. Fear God. He said to fear him. We're speaking a word to you today of reconciliation to God through Jesus Christ the Lord. The Lord Jesus shed his blood for you to, and, and bore your sin and rose again from the dead. But don't trample over his blood. Believe in him and repent of your sins. Turn away from sin. <laughs> Believe the gospel. 
The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead now dwells in me, and he can dwell in you and change your life. See, there's freedom in Jesus Christ. Jesus said, you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. He is the way and the truth and the life. You need to get him to know him by reading his word. That's how you get to know him, by reading his word. He is the way and the truth and the life. And if you know, if you know the truth, then the truth will make you free. And Jesus said, if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. See, there's freedom from sin. There's freedom from bondage. There's freedom in Jesus Christ. There is no other name except through the name of Jesus. And every knee is going to bow before him. See, this nation has forsaken God. We've turned our back on God. We say there is no God. We turn our back. We, we, we throw God out of the school, and guess what? The gun, guns come into place. We throw God out of the schools, and guess what? Metal detectors replace him. Because Jesus said, if, God said, if you forget my law, I'm also going to forget your children. It's a serious thing to sin against God, so you don't understand the seriousness of your sin. Sin is so serious that God had to punish Jesus and crush him on the cross. He was bruised for our sin. He was crushed for our iniquity. That's how serious our sin is against God. God doesn't look at sin as just some mistake. Oops, I made a mistake. No, if you've sinned against God, it's serious. It's a serious thing to sin against the holy, righteous God. God is holy. God is righteous. He will punish sin. He has to punish sin because he, because he is holy. That's why he has to punish sin. But he punished sin already. He punished the, the, our sin on Jesus. And Jesus bore our sin. He took our sin. And he rose up from the dead. He's no longer dead. He's alive. Jesus Christ is alive. And the same spirit that raised him up from the dead can dwell in you. And you can be born again. Jesus said you must be born again in order to see the kingdom of God. You cannot see the kingdom of God unless you have a radical transformation. We need, you need a revelation of God. You need the revelation of the holiness of God. You need a revelation of your sinfulness. When you see your sin and you you see yourself as who you are. You see a re you have a, that revelation. Then you come to him in brokenness and say, God, I've broken your law. I'm a sinner. I'm vile and wicked in your sight. You come to him in brokenness and call upon his name. Or if you call upon him, he said he will save you. He will put his spirit in you. He will transform your life and give you the power to walk in a righteous and a holy life. See, many people call themselves Christians. They go to church, but they're walking. They're walking and not in a holy life. They're fornicating. They're doing all kinds of things that God says he hates. Yet they go to church and they call themselves a Christian. Well, going to church doesn't Jesus make you a Christian. I am the way and the truth and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. Jesus said, narrow is the way that leads to life. And there are few on that narrow way, but broad is the path that leads to destruction. There's many on the way, the path that, that leads to destruction. But there's only one that leads to life, and that's through Jesus Christ. Jesus said, you must be born again. You must say, you need to have a revelation of your sin. When God shows you how wicked you truly are, the, the, the Bible says that without Christ, your heart is desperately wicked, deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know the depths of the inward wickedness of a man's heart? But God knows. He sees every th single wicked thing you do in secret. He sees every thought you think. He sees every action you take. And the Bible says that we all will stand before God and give an account for what we've done, whether good or whether bad, whether evil or whether righteous, we'll all stand before a holy, righteous God. And God cannot let sin into heaven. God must punish sinners because of his holiness, because of his righteousness, because he is holy, because he is separate from us. He must punish sin. But God made a way of escape so that we don't have to be the, take the punishment. Jesus Christ took that punishment. Jesus Christ was punished for our sins. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was laid upon him. And with his stripes we are healed.